a 90-year-old female presented to our practice with a history of severe symptomatic aortic stenosis. After meeting with our multidisciplinary team, she was deemed an appropriate candidate for TAVR as she did not wish to undergo open surgery under any circumstance. Her preoperative workup included a transthoracic echo and a structural CT angiogram shown here. Based on these studies, our team recommended a TAVR with a 29mm Evolute Pro valve via transfemoral access. The self-expanding valve was deployed, and what follows is our completion angiogram. Here on the angiogram, you can see a type A dissection extending above the upper frame of the TAVR valve. It was difficult to tell from these images if it originated from the level of the frame or below it at the level of the root. Up until this point in our case, we had been using transthoracic echocardiography, and so we performed an emergent transesophageal echocardiogram in order to confirm the diagnosis. The TE images shown here are what helped us to confirm the diagnosis of a type A aortic dissection. Given the patient's previously stated wishes to not have open surgery, the decision was made by the team to treat the dissection for the thoracic endovascular aortic repair using an uncovered stent graft. In these fluoroscopy images, you can see us deploying the uncovered TVAR stent graft. For our choice of graft, we used an uncovered 36 by 80 millimeter Cook Zenith Nitinol stent graft. We deployed it just distal to the top part of the TAVR valve cage above the valve outflow. It should be noted that after the valve was deployed, we had maintained wire access near the aortic valve the entire time as we were discovering this complication. As a standard practice, we typically leave the wire or pigtail in position after deployment of the TAVR valve when we are performing our final aortogram and echocardiographic imaging. That way we can identify any complications prior to their removal. By maintaining the wire in place, we are able to avoid potential problems of having to replace a stiff wire across the valve, such as entering into the false lumen of a dissection or going across a TAVR valve strut. The final aortogram and TEE both demonstrated no further evidence of the dissection, and the false lumen appeared to be tacked up by the presence of the stent. The echoes show good flow, no AI, and no flap. It should be noted that the entire operation was done without intubation and general anesthesia. Postoperatively, our patient was neurologically intact and hemodynamically stable. At her one-month follow-up, the patient received a transthoracic echo and CTA chest. The echo showed no AI and a well-seated TAVR valve. The CTA images shown here demonstrated the uncovered stent graft in good position with no evidence of the dissection in the aorta. Type A dissection is a rare but severe complication of TAVR. Open repair remains the ideal management strategy for patients willing to have it performed, but in our scenario this was not an option. TVAR allowed us to successfully treat this particular dissection, at least for the short term. As the use of TAVR increases, there may be an increased incidence of this complication. Our case shows that TVAR may be one potential strategy to manage this dreaded complication.